driver. Can't you step on it? I'm doing all the law allows. Do a little more. I'm on a million dollar deal and I've got to catch that Pittsburgh train. Yeah? And I'll either be in a Chicago jail or out ten bucks for speeding. I'll pay the ten and give you a hundred if we make it. Okay, mister. Hang on! The next block. How near am I to the hundred? Practically in your pocket. Look out! Oh, anybody you... hurt? There's a man inside. Hey! His coat's caught. Just slip out of him. Where'd you think you were going in there? Oh, wait a minute. You were doing I go right through town. Miles an hour. I ought to That's take a shot. Come on, give us a hand. Turn him over. Come on, get up there and get that thing. Come on, everybody. Come on. Please. Please. Come on, get up there. 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 Come on, get Hey, how did it happen? I don't remember. He said, do you know who I am? Oh, but what difference does that make if I get you a big verdict? Now, you just stay still. I was going someplace, and I was in a hurry, too. But where was it? Oh, no, 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 no. You're, you're a sick man. Why, you couldn't even walk across to the railroad station. Railroad station? That's it. Hey! Hey, wait a minute. Come here. You're ruining our case. Hey, you can't even walk. Give me a ticket. Quick. Oh, where to, sir? The next train. Well, uh, what's your destination, sir? The, the ne next train. I must catch it. The next train is to New York. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, uh, ticket, please. 4170, sir. Yes. Oh, oh. Track 12, sir. Hey. Hey, here's your change. All aboard. <laughs> This is New York, isn't it? Yeah, it has been for quite a while. And you want to know where I'm going? Yeah, it's customary, yes. Oh, well, I, I don't know. I can't remember. Well, you better walk until you make up your mind. No. No, I think I'm in a hurry. Well, even if you ride nowhere in a hurry, that meter's still ticked. Say, have you got any money? Well, I seem to have $10,000. <laughs> Come on, get this hat moving. Say, what is this? Yeah, we were just going to call you. This guy's got ten grand, and he doesn't know where he wants to go. Oh, yeah? Come on, Jack. Uh, perhaps you'd better take me down to the police station. You're telling me. Goodbye. Here. He had that $10,000 on him. All right. Come clean now. Where'd you get this money? I don't know. What's your name? I don't know. But if you don't remember your last name, what's your first name? I don't remember. He called me Jack. Oh, so you called him Jack, huh? Yeah, I called him Jack. Oh, just like you say, uh, uh... Come on, Jack, or, or you might say, uh, move along, Joe. Mm, I see. Or oh, the way you'd call a Pullman porter. Hey, George. Yeah, like that. Mm -hmm. All right, Jack, why were you walking around the streets with $10,000 in your pants pocket? I don't know. Well, I know that nobody sees ten grand in honest money that way. You stole it. Did I? Didn't you? Don't you know? Say, who's questioning who? I don't know. <laughs> stole you. What's your home address? I don't know. I mean New York or where? I, I tell you, everything in blank before this officer picked me up. Say, do you belong to the court or the fence? Well, that's just it. I feel as though my head and my legs have been leading different lives. Well, your legs have been doing pretty good. You had $10,000 in your pants pocket. Now, where'd you get it? I don't know. Maybe your wife gave it to you for lunch money. Huh? Have you got a wife? I don't remember. Ha! He don't remember. Boy, are you lucky. 
Well, it's a clear case of amnesia to me. It's out of my department. Here, Jack, here's your money. Take them away. Come on. Uh, uh, just a minute. 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, 4,000, 5,000, 6,000, 7,000. They haven't they identified that guy yet? Oh, they've tried photographs and fingerprints, but nobody wants him. Not even the cops. Yeah, how about Washington? Oh, they've no record of him, so he's never been a soldier, a sailor, or a Marine. Tough, isn't it? Tough, my eye. Who wouldn't like to lose his past? Just a lot of headaches and dames. I call it a break. <laughs> Well, he doesn't appreciate it. There's a bunch of mental specialists huddling over him now. Well, if he wasn't nutty before, he will be when they get through with him. <laughs> yes. You see, amnesia is when your memory is misplaced. I must say, when uh, you misplace your eyeglasses, your memory somewhere. You want them to find out, isn't it? Well, if you don't think it's asking too much. Well, you got to look for it. <laughs> and you got to look for it. What do you do? You look. You look. You look everywhere. You look, you glance keenly. Everywhere. Where? Where did I put my memory? So, if your eyeglasses are lost, somebody's going to ask you and say, Grandma, where were you, lad, when your eyeglasses were lost? Well, so you think. So you think, you think, you think again. And then you say, yes, yes, I remember. I remember I was bended over the wash tub trying to wash Antonio's rumpers. So, there were the glasses I lost. But yeah, yes, of course. <laughs> yeah, but where's my wash tub? You see, gentlemen, he understands me perfectly. Uh, science is a wonderful thing. <laughs> now we will continue with the experiment. You see, senor, in these stitches, maybe it be you washed up. You may not know it, but we will. <laughs> Excuse me. Oh, I see. One of these pictures may suggest my former occupation. Well, now let's see. A carpenter, banker, artist, beekeeper. <laughs> That's a silly occupation. Aviator, sailor. Stop it! Stop it! That is your wash tub! What is that picture? I've got it. Now yes. I remember. Yes. Oh, no, no, I've lost it again. No, you haven't lost it. This is it. This is it. It is you. You mean I'm a taxi cab? <laughs> <laughs> you haven't lost your sense of humor. He means you're a taxi cab driver. Now, gentlemen, what do you think? Without a doubt, Doctor. Mm. Well, taxi cab drivers do get around. They meet thousands of people. Surely somebody ought to recognize me. Now, my friend, you go that taxi cab in. You run into a lot of people. Look at every face you see in the street. And then suddenly, Eureka, you have found your eyeglasses. Well, th uh, thank you very much, Doctor. Why, I'll be driving my wash tub in no time. Hello? Number 39 reporting in. Reporting in, eh? And you'll be reporting out if you don't quit chasing people, asking them do they know you, instead of asking them do they want a cab. Oh, but look, the only reason I took the job. Took the job, eh? Will you take in some money today or else? You know me? We haven't been formally introduced, but if you don't think it's too bold, I'd, I'd like to hire your cab. Of course not. Won't you get in? Very kindly. Where to, miss? It's 18 East 83rd Street. And hurry. Yes, sir. I didn't mean to be rude, miss. I, I just hoped you'd recognize me. How could I ever forget you? That night at the Princeton Farm, the silver moon, the music, and the gardenias you sent. Did I? If you speak to me again, I'll have you fired.
Yes, you're Dr. Monty, aren't you? Ah, here's our friend with the misplaced memory. Yes, <laughs> ah, how was the, 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 the taxi cab business, eh? Did you remember I tell you you need some friends? Here, here I am. I am a fresh friend from a few days. Now, uh, you take the taxi cab and you'll meet a thousands, a hundreds, maybe a dozen friends. Yes. Uh, right. Now, 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 I'll break into you the good advice. Now, when you look for yourself, don't look so hard. Look around, easy, like you were looking for nothing important. Uh, whistle when you look. <laughs> Good. Uh, uh, laugh when you look. <laughs> Good. Uh, sing when you look. La, 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 la. Uh, Good, please. And someday you come face to face with yourself around the corner, and boom, you'll knock yourself into a thousand pieces. Well, thank you very much, Doctor. <laughs> You've been a great help. Uh, well, Hey, wait a minute! I, I beg your pardon, but uh, this is very unusual. I don't mind your eccentricities, but I have a number of guests waiting for me, and I don't intend to be later than I can help. Well, but you might have an accident. I will if you don't sit down. Then won't you please stop and get in the back? It'd look better. After all, you're supposed to be my passenger, you know. I wondered if we'd ever get that straight. Get his number. You'll have a hard job explaining that one to the boss. Well, but you don't understand. You see, I just got out of the hospital. Something happened to me, and I can't remember who I am. Amnesia? Yeah. Well, there's one thing certain. You're not a cab driver. Oh, here, I'll take that. Oh, no. I'll drive your cab for you, but I'll pay my own bill. Oh, I knew I shouldn't have bought that hat. Come on, I'll get some money from Daddy. It's quite all right about the fare. Oh, it's not quite all right. If Dad's home, he'd be furious since I'm late. <laughs> I may need you for an alibi. Have my guests been here long, Barton? Sometime, Miss. I've already served the cocktail. Well, tell them I'll be right in. Yes, Miss. Barton, is his father home? Yes, miss. He's in the library. And I might ask. Mr. Forbes is very angry. Please wait here a minute. Hello, Daddy. Oh, hello, darling. How about a little financing? I need some money. Yes, and I need quiet. I'll give you two minutes to go in there and get rid of that brain jackass. <laughs> That's only Tony Bates. You shouldn't pay any attention to him. He just did while advised me to ignore a howling hyena. Oh, all right. I'll try and keep him quiet. Come on now. How about that finance? <laughs> well, which one do you recognize? That piano. I think I can play it. Really? I... Oh, but don't you understand? If I can play it, then perhaps it'll help me to remember. <sighs> well, why not? Come on. Oh, hey, Jane. Hi, Jane. Come on in. We've got a swell new game. Watch me. Am I good at this? Look. <laughs> now, wait a minute. I've been gathering talent for you. This gentleman's going to play the piano for us. Come on. Jane, that's wonderful. It is a Delicacy, 
maestro, and yet what fire! What fire to serve! Stop it! Stop it, you're being cruel. He doesn't know who he is. He's trying to find out. Oh, I'd know that magic touch anywhere. Why, he's trying to rescue with a haircut. <laughs> <laughs> It isn't his fault. He has amnesia. You know all about amnesia? You, you get hit on the head and everything goes blank. Until you get hit on the head again and then, blue, it all comes back. <laughs> I see I have your attention. Now, watch a scientific experiment. Listen, old man. Maybe I can be of some assistance to you. Yes, how? Just a little experiment. There. Hey, don't do that. I'm trying to help you. <laughs> oh, dear, oh, dear. <laughs> hey, come here, young man. Yeah, I, I, I don't know you, but I want you. My name is Roger Ford. Mine's Jack Doe. Yeah, and I'm sorry. delighted to welcome you to my home. Oh. <laughs> come on, I'll buy you a drink, and we'll celebrate the departure of the Braying Jackass. <laughs> <laughs> We're from the taxi cab company. Tell that mug we've been waiting long enough. We want to see him. The taxi driver is a guest of Mr. Forbes. Oh, yeah? And he works for the taxi cab company. Send him out here. I'm sorry. He's being entertained by Mr. Forbes. I cannot disturb the gentleman. He's no gentleman. That mug belongs in his cab, and I want him in it, see? When he's in his cab, the gentleman may be a mug. But when he's a guest of Mr. Forbes, the mug is a gentleman. Well... Will you show the gentleman out? Tell the mug he's been fired. Take it away, George. I'll introduce you to a Forbes Jim Dandy. Jim Dandy. See, that reminds me, there's a D on my key tag. Do you suppose that could be my initial? Well, D stands for Doe. Could be Doyle. Or Dangerfield. Or Dorchester. Oh, that's right. Isn't there an Earl of Dorchester or something? No nonsense. He's not an Earl. He'd have the gout. <laughs> Gout's expensive. Oh, I don't know. Perhaps I could afford it. I have $10,000. I carry it in my left-hand pocket. Is that strange? Well, it's almost unheard of. What, the left-hand pocket? No, the $10,000. I hope I didn't steal it. Oh, of course not. You don't look dishonest. Why, you couldn't. Say, you've been awfully nice, but I think i better go. Oh, no, here, you haven't tried my Jim Dandy yet. Oh, all right. <laughs> oh, that is definitely the best, yes. Oh, my boy, you are an ideal guest, and you're going to stay to dinner. Oh, yes, do. Oh, well, thanks, really. Oh, but... sure you're going to stay, isn't he? Certainly. Barkins, put Mr. Doe's taxi in the garage. He's going to stay for dinner. Well, oh, don't bother, Barkins. Just leave it where it is. I beg your pardon, sir, but it isn't, sir. Isn't what? Isn't your taxi, sir. Why, of course it is. I distinctly remember leaving it there. You don't suppose I could be having a relapse, do you? Yeah, Barkins, you forget yourself. This gentleman is my guest, and you will treat him as such, even if he is a taxi driver. I beg your pardon, sir, but he isn't, sir. Yes. How do you know? I was told, sir. Told what? Tell us exactly what you were told, Barkins. Well, the exact words were, tell the mug he is fired. Thank you, Barkins. That seems quite clear. Now, see what you've done? The nicest young man you've ever brought home, and you have him fired. Well, it's your fault you were trying those mixed drinks on him. Well, if you'll excuse me, I think i Nothing I'll... of the sort. I was responsible for you being fired, so I'll give you a job as my chauffeur. Oh, no, you don't. I'm going to put him to work in my office. You are well, not. I certainly am. Well, I think now, I... you keep out of this. You can't talk to him that way. He's working for me. He's working well, in my office, and I talk to him any way I please. Yes, but I was the one that brought him here first. And I'm the one that kept him here, and I'm going to have my right. Come on, we'll have another drink. about you in every security phone we send out. That's the idea. There's a $5,000 reward for anybody who can tell me who I am. Might quite as well be me. Why not? Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Good morning. Good morning. Good morning Glad to see you're all hard at work. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Well, he certainly looks well, doesn't he?
Here are those memos you dictated yesterday afternoon, Mr. Joe. Well, thank you. That's splendid. Shouldn't you cover the gasoline filling stations in Canada, too? Right. I might have been there. I'll get you a complete list of them today. Oh, well, thank you. That's very nice. And I am convinced that these securities are of the highest standard. Paragraph. Now, in regard to a personal matter, a gentleman by the name of Mr. Jack Doe doesn't know who he is. Has anyone dropped from sight in your immediate circle? A reward of $5,000 will be offered for any clue... Mr. Doe has offered a reward of $5,000 to anyone discovering his identity. And while I know you do not need the money, Mr. Vanderbilt, I will gladly split it with you, yours truly. That'll be all. Get that out at once. Good morning. Good morning. Morning, Miss Lomas. Morning. Good morning. You're out early, Miss Forbes. Dad, I, I want it to be all right about... Huh? <laughs> yeah, I understand. But now, don't stay too long. Remember, he has work to do. Oh, I won't stay a minute. I just want to make sure he likes it here. <laughs> yeah, steel, B&O, refining, till Jack Doe to... Here are the reports you wanted on these companies, Mr. Forbes. Huh? Uh, oh, yeah, 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 yes, the reports. Mm -hmm. What is the meaning? Uh, yes, Mr. Forbes. Ask Mr. Roberts to step in here, please. I'm sorry, Mr. Forbes, but Mr. Roberts is in with Yes, Mr. Forbes. I want to see Mr. Smead at once. I'm sorry, Mr. Forbes, but Mr. Smead is in with Mr. Doe. Uh-huh. Yes, Mr. Forbes. I want Mr. Appleby. I'm sorry, Mr. Forbes. But, but Mr. Appleby is with Mr. Doe. Yeah. <laughs> uh... Uh -huh. Uh -huh. You've all done very well locally, but now we must cover every nook and corner of the country. The few scattered replies from our clients has meant nothing. We've got to devote more time and energy to the search. Now think of it. By using the facilities of this vast organization, one of you can win the $5,000 reward. Now, how can it be done? Has any one of you a suggestion? Uh, have I the privilege of saying something, please? You are fired. Dad, you can't do that. I can't but have. I'm sorry, Jack. Yes, so am I. What are you going to do now? Start looking again. Oh, it's a shame. No, you can't blame him. Well, I can. Anyone would think losing your identity was a picnic. That's it. That's what you need. What? A picnic. Relaxation and sunshine. You've been too closely confined. But if you go on like this, I will lose my head. <laughs> and then you give in? You win, weather permitting. Oh, it never rains on my picnic. That's all right. There were too many names on there anyway.
Hi, Parker. Now see where those are. Huh? Oh, yeah, you mean outside. Yes, yes, yes. Miss Forbes is in the drawing room, madame. Thank you. Oh, good. You've got the lunch ready. Yes, and who cares? I never saw it today. What? Why, the weather in the drawing room is perfect. What ozone, what vitamins. Come on, get into your outing clothes. We'll be late. Jack, have you actually lost your mind? Nope. Better wear a sun hat and some shoes with heavy soles. There may be rocks. Oh, but how could we go on a picnic? Now, don't you go on upstairs and change your clothes. Have you forgotten it never rains on your picnic? Oh, but it is. Are you going to get into some sport clothes, or are we going to get into an argument? Oh, all right. Do you mind if I make use of Barkin? No, help yourself. Thanks. I'll take that, my good man. Very good, sir. Come on, Barkin. Barkins, could you get me some glasses? Tumblers, goblets? Very good, sir. How many, sir? Oh, about three dozen. Uh, very good, sir. And Barkins, I'll, uh, I'll need a waterfall and a pond. Uh, the goldfish pond, sir? Barkins, you're a genius with ideas like that. Say, this is going to be a picnic. Uh, very good, sir. Yes, I hope it'll be. Lovely day, isn't it? Mm -hmm. It never rains on my picnics. Chocolate cake. All picnics require chocolate cake. And pickles? Require the song of birds. And sandwiches? Require ants. <laughs> you're hungry. Am I? Fresh air makes you hungry. Yep, not don't pick the wildflowers. They'll only taste. <laughs> Oh, it's so peaceful here. Jack, is that something you just remembered? No. That struck me as a good idea. A very good idea. Oh, the coffee. Oh, don't let it boil over. Now what do I do with it? <laughs> you ought to know. You're apparently an old hand at picnic. You say, what's going on here? It's a picnic, Dad. Why, Miss Hurd, just jump the pot. Yeah. Look out for that stepping stone. <laughs> it's slippery. And of all that confounded, unmitigated, idiotic, there you'll get poison mahogany. Yeah, uh, uh, here you are, sir. A nice dry rock for you. Yeah. A nice dry rock. Ideal spot, isn't it? Now, look here. I've stood all of this nonsense I'm going to. How about a sandwich, Dad? Well, this thing has got to stop. Now, there are certain things that either can't be done, or else... Uh, well done, sir. Uh, um, no, just uh, a light golden brown. Uh, it's a pot. 
You're trying to poison me on marshmallow and pickles and, uh, and liverwurst? You know, man, in spite of everything, I like you. But now, after all... Thanks, Ed. You see, I'm going to marry him. Oh, yeah? And can you see yourself promising to love, honor, and obey John Doe, number 47? Oh, but I understand I can go into court and take in any of my pleas. There, you see? Ah. And when they ask if there's any reason why this man and woman shouldn't be married, supposing another woman steps up with three or four perfectly good little reasons. Oh, Dad. But I don't feel married. Neither did I, but I'm a father. You know, if I wasn't a sentimental old fool, I'd have put my foot down long ago. Now you're talking like a father. Yeah, and that's how I'm going to act. Jack, I stand by on one condition. What is it? This. Today is the 10th of April. If by May the 1st you haven't proven your identity, you must walk out of our lives. Don't promise him that. He's only asking what I would if I were your father. Is it a bargain? Yes, sir. Oh, Dad. My darling, your fiancé has said it's a bargain. Well, it's rained on my picnic anyway, didn't oh, it? Oh, just a passing shower. Look, it's a prophecy. Yes, but just to say, we can't get married. Hey, never mind, honey, I'll find out who I am. I know, but Dad only gave us three weeks. Yeah, but it can be done. I have it. Why not think of something startling, like, uh, like jumping over the moon? Publicity. Sure, the newspapers. Oh, you can tell them about your amnesia. Uh-huh, they'll print my picture. Oh, Jack, let's go now. Why, it's a sin. I'll say, Mr. Editor, I've got a good story for you, and it won't cost you a dime. Not even half a dime. And I think it'll make a swell story to run my picture on the front page. And right under it, in big letters, who is this man? Yeah, better yet, I might run a special extra. With the entire front page of your picture. Listen, I run a dame's mug for 14 days with the caption, Who is this woman? And what happens? On the 15th day, a play opens on Broadway entitled, Who is this woman? And the dame's the star of it. But I know he has amnesia. Go on, lady. He's probably the come on for the soap campaign. Use amnesia soap and you won't forget the base. Well, I'll see you again sometime. Hello. Hello. What? Court lady who just divorced her eighth husband is reading her ninth. Something personal. Imagine this. Amnesia victim wants to know who he is. Age 25, weight exactly 170, gray eyes, brown hair. Anyone missing in your social circle? Then step right up, and if you strike it right, you'll strike right or wire to Jack Doe, care of station ABC. Something even more personal. Frankie and Johnny. <laughs> Our last lead. It sounds bad. Dear sir, my husband disappeared from Buffalo two months ago. The description you give fits perfectly. He has brown eyes, brown hair, is 25, and weighs exactly 170. His name is John Dawson, and I'm sure. I hate to go in. Suppose it's the right one. Oh? Well, darling, you shouldn't have come along. Well, I have to, darling. You see, you're a secret, and I'm a woman, and I... Well, I just had to know the answer. <laughs> I'll be right back. All right, all right. Don't break the door down. What do you want? Well, uh... I want to see Mrs. Dawson. 
And what do you want with Mrs. Dawson? Well, nothing, I hope, but uh, I had to come when I received her letter. A letter, and you had to come, eh? Ain't that just dandy? Minnie! What is it, honey? Have you been writing letters to this dude? I never saw him before in my life. Uh, then I couldn't very well be your husband, could I? No, go on. No, you don't. I can't leave Buffalo for a couple of months without a million Clark Gables making a play for you, huh? He ain't Clark Gables. No, you're quite right, lady. The whole thing's a mistake. Yes, and you made it. Police! Oh. Police! Oh, Get away! Get away! Get away! Get Come on, what's going on here? Why, he started it. John Dawson. You are hereby charged with assault with intent to commit violent injury in resisting an officer. Guilty or not guilty? Guilty. $25 or 12 days in jail. John Doe. You are hereby charged with assault with intent to commit violent injury and resisting an officer. Guilty or not guilty? Guilty, Your Honor. $25 or 12 days in jail. Next case. I just thought I should have pleaded not guilty, then maybe I could get my picture in the papers. Try making faces at the judge. You mean, uh, vagrancy, $10 a piece or 10 days in jail? We ain't got $10. All right, 10 days in jail. Your Honor, I beg your pardon. I'll pay his fine. I'll pay everybody's fine. He can't do that, you are. We've got our rights. We were legally sentenced. We were we're going to stay in jail. jail. Young man, you're wasting your money. A more undeserving selection of rascals never appeared before a magistrate's court. But, Your Honor, Miss Forbes and I feel that someone's always helping the deserving. We want to help the undeserving. The worthy have been hogging all the benefits. We want to give the unworthy a break. Ernie? Hey, stop that poker game. Get the gang down here with the cameras right away. Very well, young man. Thank you, Your Honor. Boo! Boo! Did I ask you to pay my fine? We don't want anything from the capitalist. Or stay in this lay or else. Now, listen, Sam, get out of here. You're trying to pay. Hey? We've got a writer still in jail for the court. Give him his money back. Nobody gets the money back here. What? Order of the park. What's going on here? Hey, go Come on, hey, sit down, please. Quiet, please. Quiet. Quiet. Now, but you get to get this board. Okay. Hey, let's clear the courtroom. <laughs> Here it is. Oh, look at my leg. Try and find my face. You can't even see it. Well, if I don't get a good, clear picture on the paper pretty soon, nobody will ever recognize me. Starting a riot in court, Wentworth, what will? Operator, get me Chicago, long distance. Well, there's one thing sure. If we start anything else here with the police, the only picture you'll get will be in the rogues gallery. Well, this isn't the only town that's got a newspaper. I'm going to get my face on the front page if I have to go over Niagara Falls in a barrel. Well, would it be so difficult to photograph you through a barrel? All right, you win. Hello? Colton? I just ran into him. No, he didn't know me. Amnesia. Look, if you want to put that deal over before he finds out who he is, you better... Uh... I want you 
you to collar my daughter and bring her back. You think she'll come willingly? Willing or not, glad or sorry, hot or cold, bring her back. Yes, sir, Mr. Forbes. You think you can find them? Mr. Forbes, when I'm hired to be a bloodhound, I become a bloodhound. Yeah. Smell those and get on their trail. Hmm. It's hard to get a mental picture of Mr. Doe with that fist in his face. Well, you'll be able to tell my daughter by her legs. Oh, very good, sir. Yeah. <laughs> As your expense money. Now, I want action and no publicity. I'll take the first plane out of town. Yeah. Well, what is it? Well, bargain. Toledo people, sir. Like that? Miss Jean. Look at that. Sales at my Buffalo branch office dropped off 50% yesterday. One woman withdrew $100,000 worth of bonds. Said she wouldn't trust them to a man that couldn't control his own daughter. Now my business in Toledo is ruined. You find that amnesiac and convince him he came from the farthest place away from here you can think of. I have no branches in, uh, in uh, Australia. You get him to go there and I'll give you $5,000. $5,000. Why are you so sure he came from Australia? Well, there are many symptoms. I, uh, you've never been there before? Well, then I'm convinced, Mr. Doe, that you've been kicked in the head by a kangaroo. There you go, on your horse, on your horse. We've got to get rid of this guy or we'll never put it over. How did you happen to locate us up near Cleveland? Mr. Doe, I'm a bloodhound, and when I smell five thousand dollars... What? Yes, sir, Mr. Doe, my unselfish advice to you is, take the first trip to Australia. Oh, it's a long trip, but if you have to go, I'll certainly go with you. Oh, no, 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 not you, Miss Forbes. Oh, no, you really want me. Here we go. You want me to do that. What the hell, Stop it! Stop it! No publicity. What? No publicity? Miss Forbes, for the sake of your father, for my sake. Now you stay here for the picture. Oh, they wouldn't recognize you anyway. Well, you're both getting sensible. Say, reconsider that Australian trip now. Never mind, partner. We've still got seven days left. Well, certainly. It only took six days to create the whole world. Yes, but look who did it. Oh, we can't stay here. They give us ten days. Suppose we pull some nice clean gag in, say, Detroit. Yes, and this time be sure your face is clear and unobstructed. I guarantee it. Come on. Come on. Oh. Thanks, folks. You'll see it in tomorrow's press bullet. Get into his confidence. 
Yeah, and you're getting into his pictures, too. Up here in their name. Yeah. But Chicago? But they can't go there. I do ten million dollars worth of business a year in Chicago. All right, all right, let them go, and I'll be there to give them a hearty welcome. Yeah. Miss Loomis? Book me a reservation on the first train to Chicago. Tell Barkins to pack my baggage. I'll take her to Europe. That's what I'll do, huh? Well, oh, you do. Have you a reservation for Miss Forbes and Mr. Doe? Certainly. Pardon me, uh, this is Miss Jane Forbes and uh, Jack Doe. I trust. I do trust that if we receive you, you will uh, not try any of your stunts around the hotel. We promise. Thank you. Front. <coughs> Suite 8, 37, 39, and 41. Colton. I tell you, never gave us a tumble. Yes, he's back in his hometown now, and if anybody recognizes him before we close that deal tomorrow, we lose a million dollars. There'll be some way of keeping him quiet. Got an idea? Well, you may call it that, but I think it's an inspiration. Come on. They're beginning to discipline us already. We're getting nowhere fast. We haven't even gotten Ernie for a chaperone anymore. He probably talked himself into going to Australia. Please, floor, please. Worst of all, we haven't learned a thing about me, whether I'm rich or poor, high or low, married or single. Oh, Jack, we both know you're single. Let's go away someplace where nobody can find us and get married. Oh, no, that, that, that wouldn't be right. Oh, but it'd be so much fun. Mm. All right, son, these three go in there and the others in my room. And we gotta think of something fast. I know. Suppose I start fishing downtown the Chicago River. And, and you hide under the street bridge with a box of uh, uh, salted codfish, and every now and again you hook one on. Then we'll... Uh, oh, no. Not startling enough. I was thinking of the elevated railway in the loop. We could lead a cow up the stairs at night and get her on the tracks, then you could flag the train with a red petticoat. No, that's too startling. I've got it. Oh, it's just good. Why did I never think of this before? Will that be all, sir? Yes, thank you. Thank you, sir. Well, come on, come on. Father has a branch office here. Oh. Uh, oh, no, no, listen. Tonight we'll pay big signs on the windows offering General Motors stock at $10 a share. The Standard Oil at $5. U.S. Steel at a dollar and a half. We'll say, going out of business. Clearance sale. That's it. We'll have hand bills printed with all those bargain prices on them. Oh, there'll be a riot. Well, the police reserves will be called out. Maybe the National Guard. And we'll be right up front when our pictures are snapped. Oh, I hope nothing gets in front of my face. Oh, I hope something gets in front of my legs. Come on. Oh, hello. Why, Dad, what a nice surprise. The old bloodhound. So, you're going to have a riot, are you? With police reserve. Don't forget the National Guard. Nah. Get your thing. We're going home. That is, if I still have a home. It's certain I no longer have a business. Oh, I'm awfully sorry, sir, but I, well, I was only... Did this so, after all you've done, making a fool of my daughter with your confounded circus stunts. His stunts? Why, at least half those were my ideas. Yeah, a good idea, Ernie, is to show Mr. Doe the door. But, Father, I still feel he's single. And he still can't prove it. He's got to get out of our lives and stay out. Is that your room? Yes. Yeah. Come on and pack. He's right. At least until I find out who I am. But if you don't? And I'll always remember you. And always love you. The last time I heard you, luxurious steamers, pleasant companions, deck games, I, I bought you a ticket. Please go to Australia. Please go away. Oh, 
Hello, Danny, you old rooster. Uh, what? <laughs> When'd you get back from your trip? Why, uh, say, uh, wait a minute. I've been carrying this for weeks, waiting to give it back to you. Well, thanks, but... Thanks? I'm the one to say thanks. Are you sure you can... Sure, I can spare it. I've horsed one by four lengths, and I doubled it. Well, thanks again, Danny. See you tonight at the club. Dan Kelton. Why, that's me. Hey, wait a minute. Well, Danny, old boy, how are you? Glad to see you. Back among us, eh? Why, are yes, they uh -huh. sore at you at the club? Boy, gone all this time and not even a postcard. Well, it seems quite a trip. Yeah, right? some trip, I guess, huh? Your club did all right, your spot, while you were tripping. My, uh, my spot? Sure. The Paradise Club. You know, you had a rolling so well, your manager just kept raking in the money. Well, you'll have to slow up a little bit to see him a little hazy. It was quite a trip. Uh, you, uh, you think it was a spree, of course. I know, I know. Bad booze. I got it once. It'll wear off, though. I'm, uh, I'm the owner of the Paradise Club. Why, certainly. Of course you are, Danny. Yeah, uh, Dan Kelly. Mm -hmm. I'm going over there now. You want to lift? Yeah, uh, wait a minute. You want to know this. Um, am I married? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Of course not. You're single. At present. Uh, see you at the club. Why'd you find out? Downstairs in the lobby, I met a man. Met two men. Uh, one of them gave me this. He borrowed it for the races. Dan Kelly. Well, that proves it. Yeah, one thousand dollars. That proves. And then a second man recognized me. That proves it. It makes a final. Oh, let's go to the club for dinner now. Oh no, no, it's too early. Oh come on, it's never too early to look at my property. Uh, our property. Oh come on, Daddy. Uh, no, I, I'll join you later. All right, let's go. Oh, but we can't go dressed like this. Well, um, how long will it take you to hurry? Well, I'm practically changed already. All right. <laughs> oh, Daddy, isn't it wonderful? It was worth all the trouble it cost us. It didn't cost you $5,000. Get Nanny. Do you think you can get me a full detail record of this Dan Kelly? You know, I was just thinking about... Shh, don't think so loud. Get me the record. Get it. No, no. Use the phone downstairs. Please, remember, for the next 24 hours, this mug that's coming here later bosses the joint. In fact, he owns the joint. Is that clear? Yes. Yeah. 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 Now, wait a minute. And another thing. My name ain't Kelly anymore. It's Donovan. Donovan. Now, if you remember that, you're going to get a bonus. You forget it, you're going to get fired. Now, is there anything else you can suggest, Mr. Colton? Not a thing. Really? The plan is perfect. Well, it's your money and your plan. <laughs> oh, yes, remember. Now, this mug that's coming here is me. He owns the joint. I'm just the manager around here. Whatever he says goes. Now, scram. Yes, Mr. Yes, Mr. Yes, Mr. Yes, what? Mr. Uh, Mr. Donovan. Oh, come on, boy. Bring it in your hands from now on. Just keep him convinced he's Kelly until tomorrow afternoon and the money's yours. You can bet on me. I am betting on you. A million dollars worth. You know, this is going to be the easiest money I ever made in my life. <laughs> what do you want? Mr. Kelly. What? Uh, uh, Mr. Donovan, I think it's them. They're here. You better get out the back way, the both of you. Yeah. Does it look the same? Uh, oh, uh, well, yes, yes. I was just uh, refreshing. Well, it's Mr. Kelly. Glad to see you back, sir. Thank you. Had a nice trip. That's good, sir. We all sure missed you. Good evening, Mr. Kelly. Good evening. Good evening, Mr. Kelly. Good evening. Good evening, Mr. Kelly. The, uh, the uh, nightclub business starts late, you know. <laughs> Look, Daisy, Mr. Kelly. Oh, so it is. Well, where have you been, Mr. Kelly? <laughs> well, uh, Oh, uh, Mr. Donovan to see you. He's been managing the place fine. How are you, Donovan? Uh, glad to see you back, Mr. Kelly. Delighted. In fact, I'm uh, relieved. Yeah, it's quite a job managing this place. Well, you ought to know. Oh, uh, Donovan, may I present Miss Forbes? Pleased to meet you, ma'am. Would you like to see what the joint or the place looks like, Mr. Kelly? 
would we? Would we? Well, come this way. I'll show you around. Just, hello, uh, Mr. Kelly. Oh, hello. Donovan, that old lady's working too hard. Give her $200 and send her home. What? Give her $200. Oh, Mr. Oh. Kelly, bless your heart. All right, my good woman. Hey, I want that when you come back. I ain't coming back. Yes, you sure are. Well, no, not so very good. Yeah, uh, Barkard, my glasses. Uh, if you'll permit me, sir. Oh! Yeah, let me see it. If you'll pardon me, sir, I wish to give notice. Give notice? Well, sir, considering the sort of publicity you're about to receive, you can hardly expect me to remain in your service. Educated, reform school, six months, county jail, two years, state's penitentiary. Ja oh, don't take it so hard, Mr. Forbes. They don't say they hung him. Yeah, get out of my way here. Uh, Barkin's my hat. Yeah, Barkin's, oh, there he is, my hat. Here it is. Where are you going? Australia. Australia? Darling, what do you think of those ugly drapes? What's the matter with them? Oh. Silver cloth is so garish. They are pretty loud and cheap. What do you mean, cheap? $300 a pair? Well, loud anyway. Take them down. What, take them down tonight? No, oh, right now. They should be silk in a burgundy color. Yeah, but that wouldn't match the decoration. That's right. We'll have to have the whole club redecorated throughout. Donovan, get the decorators in tomorrow. Look at those frightful vases. Uh, they ain't vases. Them's vases. They cost $500. They're vases. Hey, lady, they're vases. You mean they vase vases. Hey, what are you doing there? You want to wreck the drink? You can't do that. Oh, that's awful music. What do you mean, awful? Say, that's Toby Billy Delight Orchestra. You ought to get white. Oh, well, maybe we ought to have a solid gold saxophone in there, too. Donovan? I know, but... Aren't you forgetting yourself? Darling. I believe that you should discharge the orchestra and get one that can at least play in harmony. That's right. Donovan, fire the orchestra. What? You can't do that. Well, uh, perhaps you could give them a week's notice. So you've given me a better idea. We'll give everyone a week's notice. What? Listen to me, all of you. Come over here. Listen to me. I know you all want to see a bigger and better paradise club. So tonight, we're going to close for one week. We'll reopen a new club, new decorations, new policy, new everything. You can all have the time off at my expense. Hooray for Mr. Kelly! Hooray! You're doing wonderfully, darling. Hey, come here, you. Don't you know the overhead of this joint for a week is seven grand? That's my business. I say you won't close down this club. I say I will close down this club. I've had enough of this. So have I. Donovan, you're fired. <laughs> you're firing me. Get out of my club before I throw you out. Oh, you're going to throw me out. All right, man, throw him out. The boss said to take orders from him. Sure. I'm sorry, Mr. Ke uh, Mr. Donovan, but you heard what the owner said. Come on. All right, get out of here, you Dad. dumb idiot. Put it. Now, come away from that ruffian. Dad. This man, Kelly, is a criminal. He, he's a murderer. He's a bigamist. I'm what? There, his police record. That'll tell you who he is and what he is. No wonder he doesn't want to remember. But, Mr. Forbes, I couldn't be a bigamist. I couldn't even find one wife. Oh. Jane. Get away from her, you penitentiary pup. Yeah, come, Jane. I'm getting you out of this pack of scum. Hey, you can't call me that. I'll get a report on him and let you know. Oh, you will, you smart. There, yeah, you can't do that. Oh, I can't. I'll no. keep your nose out of there. Uh, hey. Oh, oh. Uh, you. Chicago office. Makes you look ridiculous. Yeah, make me ridiculous. Look at your leg. 
Here, look at him. Yeah, go back and sit down. Have you some spirits of ammonia? I think he's coming too. Yes, right here. Thank you. What's the matter? Why, uh, uh... I remember. We hit an ice wagon. Say, if I missed that appointment... Do you know who you are? Why, of course, I'm Terry Dodd. I was on my way to Pittsburgh this morning. Oh, no, not this morning, Mr. Dodd. Say, where am I? You're in the Imperial Hotel, Chicago. Chicago? Get me Durbin, 1770. Say, a million-dollar contract hangs on this call. Oh, that driver shouldn't have gone so fast. Thank you. Hello? Dodd Steel Company. This is Terry Dodd. Why, Mr. Dodd, where are you? Never mind that. Is Michael there? Just a moment, please. Hello? Hello, Michael. Why, Terry, where have you been? Don't ask any questions. What about the Townsend Bridge contract? They changed the specification and extended the dateline until noon today. Oh, uh, well, I guess that lets us out. I can't be in Pittsburgh in three minutes. Townsend's here. What? Where? The Imperial Hotel. The Imperial Hotel? What's his room number? 641? Thanks. Listen, what, what's our new figure? Paper, paper. Yeah? Yeah? All right, thanks. See you later. Oh, but you can't. Oh. No, no, I say well, no. Well, I know, but I've got it. Terry, Terry, I know where 641 is. It's two floors below us. Thank you, miss. But you can't leave the room. Oh, let's go this way. But you can't, Mr. Dodd. I wait for them, I'll lose my shirt. Oh. every chance. I guess your firm gets the contract. That's fine. Here you are, sir. Thank you. Hello, George. Hello, Fulton. Terry, you got here just in time. But my boy, uh, what... Uh... Oh, well, I'm, I'm sorry, Mr. Thompson. You see that... Uh, well, here's our bid. Oh. Try the door. Hmm. Your bid is the lowest, Terry. I'm sorry, gentlemen. The contract goes to the Dodd Steel Company. Look here, Thompson. You agreed to award us the steel contract at 12 shots. The Dodds have always supplied my steel. I said I'd sign with you if Mr. Dodd failed to appear. But as you see, it's exactly 12 o'clock, gentlemen. I see. Come on, George. Uh, uh honeymoon? Huh? Oh, oh, no, no, nothing like that. Uh, oh, this is Miss... Uh... Hey, by the way, who are you? Don't you know me? No, but I'd like to. Now do you remember? No. Nope. Well, now. No, but you're getting warmer. Uh. Say, this is love at first sight. Jane! It's all right, Dad. He's Terry Dodd of the Dodge Steel Company. Oh, 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 Terry, this is my father, Mr. Forbes. How do you do, Mr. Forbes? The Dodge Steel Company. My boy, I am glad to know you. <laughs> Didn't I tell you he was an ideal young man? Have you met Fred Townsend? Oh, how do you do? Of course, I'm glad to know you. Mr. Nanny, do you think you'll get two tickets? To Australia? No. To paradise. 